<laughs> excellent, excellent. Wow. Renaissance Union, y'all is well? And all is in divine order. I miss you guys. <laughs> I really sincerely miss you guys. And I miss you, Donnie. And your jokes. Matter of fact, I want to salute you. Well, maybe I shouldn't. You know, it's the 4th of July, and, and everybody's hanging out, and they're cooking hot dogs and hamburgers, steaks, and drinking their favorite beverages. And I'm watching all the fireworks go off all times of night. Can't get any sleep. But I'm smelling all this good food. And I'm watching people just turn it up. And if some of y'all know what turn it up means. <laughs> but, but Donnie, it's been awful hot outside. I wish I knew how to make ice cream. Where can I go to learn how to make ice cream? How about Sunday school? Everyone is celebrating the 4th of July weekend, freedom, liberty, and independence for our nation. But we did see last week some things that just boggled our minds and just made us want to sigh. Sometimes you want to cry, but instead you just sigh. So let's just take a collective sigh. You know, it just seemed like so many things we worked for over the years got diminished got dismantled, got destroyed, but it's just an illusion. Can we just say it's just an illusion? It's just an illusion because we still move forward and we move away the stone. So today I want us to reflect on a different kind of freedom, a different kind of liberty, a different kind of independence, a different kind of freedom. What I'm talking about this morning is a spiritual freedom, a spiritual liberty, a spiritual independence. That's what I'm talking about today. A place where we become empowered to know that we can be independent and not dependent on the world. What does it look like to be independent and not dependent on the world? To have your independence, to move, to breathe, to live, to have, to be, to do the things that you want in your life. All of us are sitting on something that we want. It's the common denominator. I had a chance to speak 17 times last week. And when the Supreme Court decision came down, I was interviewed 11 times. Spur of the moment, people saying, can you do an interview with a microphone or a camera in my face, trying to express and trying to balance the feelings and emotions that I feel as a man who's 59 and a half years of age. But living in the world, we say elevation is part of our creation. And elevation is the evolution of who we are. And so everything has a reason. Everything has a season. And I firmly believe in that. I stand as that being my foundation. So repeat this as you stand. Greater, greater, greater. is the power in me than the power in the world. Now let's say it with some power, like we move that stone. Greater is the power in me than the power of the world. Now think about this. Think about this. And claim it as yours. The power in me is greater than the power in the world of the world that I see. That's where we want to be. You may be seated. As we go through this weekend and we see all the displays of fireworks being set off, the momentary noise can be a distraction, just like life. So many noisy moments, and those noisy moments form a distraction. And within a split second, we're looking away from what we really intended to do. So I want us today to celebrate 
your declaration, your affirmation of your personal freedom, liberty, and independence. That's where I want us to be. Our independence means the independence of our souls, our minds, our body, our spirits. That's where we need to be. Claim our independence from all the things that we see that serve as a distraction to us, for us, about us. And we move on down the road. Repeat this after me. My power of mind and connection to the divine creates my vision to see, ears to hear, and will to work the word. Now let's do that again with feelings and emotion. My power of mind and connection to the divine creates my vision to see, ears to hear, and will to work the word. Now, we'll go deeper into that. Now, I need to hear everybody in here that wants to set the intention to celebrate their personal independence today to say, ow. <laughs> say it one more time, ow. <laughs> Leah just looks at me sometimes like, where did he get that from? <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about a deep, personal kind of independence. This is the independence from anybody in your life, significant other, friends, family, coworkers. We're talking about the independence of you and not being dependent on anyone else. And we know this to be true, right? No two people are the same. No two people have the same DNA. No two people have the same journey in life. No two people have the same feelings and emotions, expressions. But why do we so often put ourselves in situations where we think we got to get in, to be in, to do what everybody else is doing, and all of a sudden it's not fulfilling, and we say, I got to discover myself. You're never lost. You just need to reveal yourself. One of the things that I like about this fireworks thing is that when you see the firework, it starts off on the ground. It's packed with everything it needs. And all of a sudden, it's lit. And it goes to high, high, high in the sky. And then all of a sudden, it reaches a threshold where it says, I got to be liberated. I got to be free. And it just bursts wide open into this beautiful, awe-inspiring creation. And that's kind of like us. Everything is inside of us. Everything that we're purposed to do, everything that we pray for is within us. Everything that we're supposed to practice is about the practice of revealing who we are, what's inside of us. But we have to elevate ourselves, just like that firework, to move to a point where we see from up high that all the things that taxied our minds, our spirits, our bodies, our soul, all those things weren't important. But we have to elevate above and release all of it and let it go. We practice this as a community. Release and let it go. Can we say that now? Release and let it go. We practice this. But it takes the level of elevation like that firework to get to the stage where we have to let it all go. We're traveling so high. We're high in the spirit, high in the word, that we see ourselves releasing. And as we get on high and we release, we begin to see everything just move away from us. And it has no value. We're breaking free from all the self-imposed limitations, the worry, the wandering, the whooshing, because we're moving toward the word. It was something I, I said last week in a church service, and it was these words when asked the question, why do you never get in a bad mood and stay in a bad mood? I said, because I understand that every adult 
finds themselves in a perpetual state of healing because of the things that we experience that do not align with our expectations, desires, and will. I said that. But it fits like a glove to a hand to 2 Corinthians 4, 16, 18. So we do not lose heart, though our outer self is wasting away. Our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing us for eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison as we look not to the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things unseen are eternal. I asked you a question this morning. Do you worry too much about the things you see today? And then you notice a day later, a week later, a month later, you wonder, what was that thing I was worried about on July 2nd, 2023, 2021, 1999? What was the thing that pressed my mind so much that I was so concerned? At some points, we feel like we want to commit suicide because it seemed like it was so major. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what's to be revealed for you, by you. That's what we have to live for. I'm revealing. I'm walking in the process of setting the intention and then seeing it unveiled, the revealing process. We always say God is not finished with me yet. And with that idea that God is not finished with me yet, I let go of all the things in the past that I've done right, I've done wrong. You let it go. Who did the wrong to you? You let it go. And that's the whole idea. We're in this healing process, and it's constant. And that's the foundation of unity. Myrtle Fillmore was in a situation diagnosed with tuberculosis. The doctors made the diagnosis and the prognosis that you're going to die very shortly. The most we can give you is six months. And she believed that if we start this movement, and do we understand what movement means? Do we understand that? Movement means to move. (laughs) Is that pretty good? Movement means to move. And she had the idea, unity movement, the unity is the alignment with the Christ spirit that says, I'm whole, I'm healthy, I'm prosperous. And so Myrtle Fillmore set out to affirm this daily at every thought that was inconsistent with the idea, I can heal, I can be whole. She matched it up with an affirmation that I am healthy, I'm whole, I'm prosperous. And that's what we're supposed to do, too. And so when I say we're in a perpetual state of healing, every moment of our life, you got to understand, we're faced with situations. Those situations can be put on a scale, and they either provide us pleasure or pain. The thing that we have to realize is if it causes us pain, then we have to enter into a healing process. That's what this life is all about. How quickly can you triage yourself? How quickly can you take that experience that didn't feel so good that caused you pain, anguish, anger, and say, I'm going to take it to a healing place? I'm not going to deny it. I'm just going to take it into a healing place. Myrtle Fillmore didn't deny the diagnosis, but she says, I can heal it. And that's where we're at now. So everything you experience today, this week, next week, Put it on that simple scale, pleasure and pain. And if it causes you pain, take it in the healing process. And that process is using the word to transform you. That's where we want to be here this morning. Do you understand that? It's pleasure versus pain. But the next thing that I need to point out on that scale of pleasure versus pain is what we have to deal with is knowing, knowing the truth that nothing lasts forever. Nothing is permanent. The impermanence 
of everything. What's impermanent? Everything. Your looks. Your weight. Your job. Your relationship. You name it. It's not permanent. And what we have a problem is, is dealing with our mindset that everything is supposed to be permanent. As it was yesterday and yesteryear, as you ask the average person in the counseling session, what's bothering you? Well, I thought things would never change. But they did. All things changed. Let's say it together. Nothing remains the same. All things change. And so with that, we see through that verse, 2 Corinthians, renewed day by day. Renewed day by day is the opportunity to renew our faith and hope. And so this is where we go back to Myrtle Fillmore. And she's saying, my power of mind and connection to the divine creates my vision to see, ears to hear, and the will to work the word. And so the will to work the word is the question. Because sometimes we see, we hear, but will we work the word that's given to us? Brett gave us a powerful ministry message today, a challenge and an opportunity. But will you work the word? He gave us homework. Will you do your homework? Or will the dog eat it up before you get here next Sunday? (laughs) That's the question. But this is our opportunity for independence. When we talk about spiritual tools, these are the spiritual tools that we're giving you. The word works if you work it. Johnny Coleman always talked about that. But do you have the will to work the word? And so this is what we're saying. Repeat after me. I'm now operating with spiritual power. I am operating with now faith. Let us say that again. I'm now operating with spiritual power. I'm operating With now faith. Eckhart Tolle says something. Realize deeply that the present moment is all you have. Now, the primary focus of your life is the now. All you can live in is the now. Tomorrow's history. The future is unknown. So we embrace the now and we control what we can control. And the things we can't control, we let them slide off of us. We move them away. Now, this is your real Independence Day. Here's your spiritual tool to put into practice this week. Close your eyes and take a deep breath. And exhale. Now we're going to take a deep breath. Hold it in for four seconds. Four. And release it. In private practice, we call that a triangular breathing technique. I want you to repeat this with your eyes closed. I am here. I am now. I am free. I am liberated. I am independent. And when you open your eyes, I want you to embrace your freedom, your independence, your liberation, and be present in the moment. Can we say an affirmation together? Let's just breathe it in. Let's say the affirmation. Today, Today. I declare my independence day. I free myself from the anxieties of the past and the uncertainties of the future. I am present in this moment and in this presence. I find peace and love, the peace of God and joy of love, which transcends all understanding. Is with me here and now. I am independent. I am present. I am at peace. Amen. If you ever come to the point in your life where you realize 
the value of independence and freedom. That space where you know you're creating something new for you. And it's about you. It's for you. But it's really God working through you. You've all been gifted. You've been packed like that firework with everything that you need. You got to light the fire. Set the intention. And be prepared to move. And you're moving upward. Onward and higher. To an elevation point where you just come to this point, of, a combustion must happen. But this time, it brings about a light. A shining light that everybody is to see. It's everything that wasn't important. The anguish, the anger, the frustration. Even the intimidation of life. Just moves away from you. And you say to yourself, I am one with God. I am blessed and highly favored. And so it is. Let's carry this spirit of independence into our lives. Not just today, but every day. Claim it as your independence day. Your freedom to be, do, have, whatever you want. Renaissance Unity, I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. So thanks for having me this morning, and God bless each and every one of you. And know there's at least one person on this earth who loves you, and it's me, Glenn. Thank you. <laughs>